So here's where Boo has been like over grooming and stuff. So hopefully that'll grow back. Boo says don't show that. Boo says don't show that to people. Okay, Bo. Stella, Splash, Simba, Boo, Sammy, Richard, Nancy, Goldie, Ziggy, Ringo, Eva, Hydrox, and Ditto. The Lucky Pharaohs. It is 9.30 a.m. and today I want to put this Advantage 2 flea medicine on the cats. Um, so I got this at Petco. I got two boxes because each box has six doses. So I want to put this on as many cats as I can. In an ideal situation, I would get this on eight of the cats because I can actually pet and brush eight of the cats. So I want to see if I could do that. And this is for use only on cats over nine pounds. So I weighed Sammy yesterday. She lets me pick her up and I can step on a scale. And she weighs just about nine pounds, between nine and 9.4 pounds, because, you know, scales are not always 100% accurate. She's the smallest of the cats. So that way I know I could use this on all of the cats. And this is what it looks like. So it comes in these small tubes. And what you have to do is you have to take the cap off, turn the cap around, which punctures the opening in the tube. And then you take this tube and you part the hair on the back of the cat's neck and you apply it on the back of the cat's neck. Um, and you want to apply it here on the back of their neck so that they're not going to be able to lick it off or groom it off. So I've never used Advantage before, but I have used Revolution, which requires a vet's prescription. And I know from using Revolution that what happens is the moment I put it on the back of their neck, then they freak out because it's wet and it's cold. So... I might try something a little bit different, which is to kind of like rub it in a little bit like that. But I don't know, because if they're freaking out, like I just want to get it on as fast as possible. Um, so that's what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to do it now because before I do that, I want to finish my breakfast and then I want to flea comb all these cats. And then after I flea comb them, I'm going to put the advantage on. And then hopefully after that, I'll just vacuum up up here and then they will get their breakfast. Okay, boo. I just put the advantage on Boo, Stella, and Simba. First they got brushed and then they got flea combs. Stella really didn't get flea combed that much because she was fighting it. Um, but I was able to get the advantage on them. Hopefully it'll work and keep them free of fleas for a while. I was not able to do splash yet because he's really aware and he's like, okay, something's going on. Something's not right. And um, he's kind of moving away from me every time I try to brush him. So um, three out of four up here have been done so far. And now I'm going to put their breakfast together and maybe I'll be able to get splash while he's eating. It is 10.30 a.m. I just came downstairs. Let's see what's going on down here. So here's little Eva, and this was on top of the mini trampoline last night. So I guess they took it off, they bunched it up. That's fine. I'm happy she's laying on this rather than the carpet because if she's dropping any fleas or, you know, flea eggs or whatever, she's gonna drop them in this, which I can then put in the laundry. Let's take a look at the flea traps. So this is the flea trap that only had like five or six fleas in it last night, and it definitely has more. It has about 15 fleas in it, so at least that's better than catching nothing. And this one I have near their large cat tower. Good morning, Sammy. And here's the other flea trap. And this has a lot of fleas in it. I don't know if you could see all the fleas, but really too many for me to count, but... It definitely seems to have more fleas in it now than it did last night. So I'm just going to leave it here and see what it does. Good morning, Ziggy. Let's take a look at the white sheet. Hey, Ziggy, how are you? There is a lot of what looks like flea dirt on this white sheet. I don't know if the camera's picking it up because obviously these specks are so, so tiny. There's a lot. A lot of black specks on this sheet so what I am gonna do is definitely um, put this through the laundry again today I'll probably be doing daily laundry and then here is Boo's old daybed 
And there are some black specks on here. They don't look like fleas because they're much smaller, but I definitely see specks. Good morning, Nancy. So what my plan is right now, um, the upstairs cats are finishing their breakfast. I was able to get some of the advantage on Splash's neck. So I thought I would be able to do it while he was eating, but you know, he's very smart. He was like on to me. So he moved underneath the dining room table. So I moved his food underneath the dining room table and I was actually able to get the applicator on the back of his neck and I squeezed it and I got some of the medicine on the back of his neck, but then he moved so fast that a few drops of it fell on the floor, which I wiped up immediately. I just put the cap back on it because I know it's not totally empty. So if I need to maybe put the rest of it on him like later, maybe I could try to do it again. I'm hoping that they actually put more than enough medicine in these little tubes so that if all of the medicine does not go on the cat's neck, it'll still be effective. Because I know even with what I put on Boo, I wasn't able to get like 100% of everything out of the tube. So... Um, I see a speck up here that looks like a flea. I'm going to grab like a tissue and get that off. Then what I want to do is I am going to flea comb all these cats and then see who I could put the medicine on. It's 11.06 a.m. and I'm trying to get the camera to focus on this little tiny hole in this Advantage tube. Um, so when you open these tubes, you want to make sure you could see an open hole like that. Because once or twice today, when I thought I had opened the tube, it wasn't exactly like open all the way. So I just wanted to point this out. You might have to prick it a few times with the end of the cap just to make sure that it is fully open. So here's Sammy. She just had her application. Ziggy had an application. Richard had an application. I just flea combed Nancy and now I am going to apply it to her also. Okay, so I just got the medicine on Nancy and I'm hoping that these guys don't groom each other and then lick it off of each other. So there's Nancy over there. That's my concern because they do spend so much time like grooming each other. Um, Nancy was already smelling the back of Ziggy's neck and I had to kind of shoo them away from each other. So I just gave them each a few treats. Um, you know, because of their good behavior, letting me put the medicine on the back of their necks. And hopefully it'll work. I am still going to continue to flea comb them, but I'm just really hoping this helps. Here's Nancy and little Eva. Nancy's not too happy. Something I should mention about this flea medication is that it is not cheap. So it was around $65 for six doses. And I ordered at Petco where you order online and then pick it up. They give you 15% off. I also had $5 worth of rewards. So it ended up being a little bit over $100. That's why I'm really hoping that the doses that I was able to get onto the back of their necks will actually do something and be helpful. And I'm really hoping that over the course of the next two to four weeks, we can break the flea cycle and at least make good progress because I really don't want to be spending $100 a month on this flea medication. I also don't, you know, I'm not a fan of putting chemicals on cats or, you know, into their system, but because of the severity of the flea outbreak, I definitely wanted to get a big jump on it. Here's Ringo. Ringo is the largest of the cats down here, so I really, really, really wish I was able to brush him and comb him because he's been itching a lot, although he's not been itching that much today, but he has been. How you doing, Ringo? Okay, everyone is eating their breakfast. They are having some homemade food made out of turkey. I put some freeze-dried chicken on top. So while they're eating, I'm going to go upstairs and start cleaning up the kitchen. Tomorrow, I am supposed to be having a new dishwasher installed because my dishwasher broke. 
So it's been really time consuming washing everything by hand. And yes, I know I feed the cats on paper plates, but there are bowls and utensils and other things involved with uh, preparing the homemade food for them. And that combined with all of the other dishes and pots and pans and everything, it is very time consuming. So I'm really looking forward to getting a new dishwasher that works and I'm hoping it works better than my old dishwasher, which is probably like 20 years old. It was in this house when I purchased the house and it's been gradually losing parts over the past few years, like parts of the inside have been breaking off, nothing too operational, but then recently um, it had more of a major break. So I was like, you know what, it's time to just get a new one. So they're supposed to let me know tonight when they're going to be delivering it tomorrow and I'm keeping my fingers crossed hoping everything goes well and it's an easy delivery and installation. But that also means I need to clean out like everything that's under my kitchen sink and I need to make sure that there's room for them to maneuver this major appliance into the kitchen and take the other one out of the kitchen. I don't know if they're going to use the front door or the back door so there's a lot of things that I need to kind of clean and organize and move around so... It's going to be a full day. I might not be able to spend as much time cleaning up after the cats as I would like to, but I will definitely try. It is 2.30 p.m. The landscapers are here, and I just walked in the room because I want to look outside and see what they're doing from these windows because I can't see from any of the other windows. And look what's going on here. Four cats on the bed at the same time. This is so cute. They all have like their portion of the bed. They look so comfortable. Maybe they feel better now that they've had more flea medicine, so they shouldn't have any itches to scratch or anything. They should be much more comfortable without any fleas. It is 10.30 p.m. and I just came downstairs to kind of get the cats ready for the night. I'm looking at the sofa right now to see if I see any live fleas on it and now I see like litter. Ringo was laying here, I just see like some tracked litter. Um, but I don't see any fleas so that's good. And here is the day bed. I do see some specks that could be fleas so I'm going to go grab um, some tissue and pick those up. Here's Sammy. Hello, Sammy. How are you? Stretching? I have to remember not to pet them on the back of their neck. This is my flea container and I have found that if I see some fleas, if I grab them with like a tissue or toilet paper or paper towel and then I drown them in the water and dish soap mixture, um, then that works really good. But if I only pick them up in some paper and then try to squash them, they don't squash. I need to drown them. So that's what this is. These are all the drowned fleas in small bits of paper. You can see there's a lot because this container is full. I just gave the cats a snack of some canned food. So upstairs the cats had some Shebas earlier today and Right now, I just split up like a 5.5 ounce can among the seven cats. I gave Richard some extra, so I actually opened up two cans because he really didn't eat his dinner. And I just picked up two live fleas off of this white fabric on top of this rebounder. So this fabric is actually a, I think it's called a dust ruffle. It's one of the things that you put um, like on your bed underneath your mattress then it hangs down on all the sides and I found this in my laundry room I recently got a new one I got the kind that has elastic and it just goes around the bed it doesn't like go all the way under the mattress it's just so much easier to clean uh, that way you don't have to take the whole mattress off or anything so I had this one and I was like well I should really put something on here that's white so I could see any flea specks and I'm very glad that I did that because I just saw two fleas and I was able to dispose of them. I drowned both of them. Here's Nancy. She's on watch near the kitchen door. She likes to spend a lot of time here just looking underneath the door. And I keep telling her that if she behaved herself when she was upstairs with the other cats and didn't try to attack them, 
that she could spend more time up there. But she never listens to me. She sees something. Who is it, Boo? Someone's probably on the other side. Nancy, I don't need you to be on patrol. This is not your job. Your job is not to be on patrol, okay? Go downstairs and relax, okay? That's your job. Go downstairs and relax. We'll figure out what your job should be. Nancy, your job is to take care of all the other cats downstairs, okay? Make sure all the other cats are behaving. That's your job, okay? Okay, Mama Nancy? Nancy, if you're the Mama Cat, you have to go take care of all the babies downstairs, okay? Go take care of all your babies and make sure they're all behaving, right, Nancy? You're supposed to set a good example for them. Make sure they're behaving. So that's your job, okay? Okay. Good night, Nancy. Good night, everybody else. Good night, Richard. Good night, Sammy. Good night, Goldie. Good night, Ziggy. Good night, Eva. Good night, Ringo. See you tomorrow. We're getting a new dishwasher tomorrow, guys, okay? So don't be afraid. It is 8.25 a.m. and Boo has not moved until I press record on this camera. He just wants to lay in my bed, like this specific location on my bed. And like last night, I didn't want to... Last night I did not want any cats in my room. I just wanted to get a really good night's sleep, but no, Boo had to sleep there. And, you know, he spends his days there. And in the morning, I'm like, Boo, go run and play, go do something. But no, he just wants to, to lay there. Um, but he's fine, like, once he gets up and moving. It's just that I think he just wants to hang out with me all the time. Because, like, right now I'm getting ready for my day. So he says, like, he's just going to sit there and, like, watch me. Boo, go play. So I put the toys on for the cats and uh, they could play with them if they want to. Uh, Boo was um, getting some fleas off of himself last night. So he was scratching uh, on the white blanket. And before I went to bed, I said, let me look to see if there's anything underneath them. And sure enough, I found a few fleas. So last night I did not flea comb the cats because, you know, there was too much going on. Um, I was up later than I wanted to. I had to clean out my entire kitchen because of the dishwasher delivery today. They're supposed to be here between 11.45 and 3.30 today, so it gives me some time to get things moving this morning. But I do have to hurry up and get myself ready for my day, get all the cats fed. And hopefully it'll be an easy procedure to deliver the new dishwasher, take the old one out, and it'll be quick and easy, and hopefully there will not be any complications and everything will be good, right, Bo? Right, Bo? Okay. Here's Stella. I put these toys on for the cats and they like to play with them in the morning. This entire area, like this entire play rug area, I'm gonna have to clean everything off of it and just like put it aside somewhere because if they need to deliver the dishwasher through the front door, sometimes they just take it through the living room, down the hall, and to the kitchen. If it's easier for them to do that, then bring it in the back door. The back door pretty much comes into the kitchen, but it is kind of like a tight turn. So I don't remember when I had my refrigerator and stove delivered, if they brought it in the front door and the back door. Um... I think they did bring it in the front door, if I remember correctly, because I remember for a while I had a stove here in the living room because they needed a wrench. Like something happened with the wrench. Either they didn't bring the wrench or they didn't have it with them. And I remember them leaving the stove here and then they had to go to like Lowe's to buy a wrench. It was like really weird. Um, so I do remember them bringing it in the front door, which is why I definitely need to make sure I clean out this entire area and give them plenty of room to maneuver. It is 11.15 a.m. Here's Stella and here's Boo. They're laying on my bed. Boo was in his room and I had the door shut and I was like, okay, this is good. He'll be in his room and the other cats will be in here. And I took all of their toys and everything from the play rug in the living room and I put it in Boo's room. I'm like, oh, he should be happy in there. Well, I opened the door to get something, and sure enough, he came flying out. I was like, what do you want, Boo? Well, it ended up he wanted to come in here and lay on the bed in his spot. That's his happy spot. And he's here with Stella. Splashes underneath the bed. 
And here's Simba. Simba's on top of the cat tower. This entire play rug area has been cleaned out. And I actually feel like I'm echoing a little bit right now because there's so much less stuff in this room. Like so much of the cat stuff in this room is in Boo's room right now. And it just feels more airy and spacious. And I wish I could keep all the cat stuff in Boo's room, but I don't think that's a reality. They really like playing in here better. So um, anyway, it's all cleaned out if the dishwasher has to come through here. And the kitchen has all been cleaned out. I have my vacuum here. And I did take the kick plate off of the dishwasher um, because, you know, there's all kinds of just debris and stuff that gets caught underneath it. So I did clean it out. And I pushed the kitchen table over toward the wall. And what that does is it makes like a lot of space here in the middle of the kitchen. Now the kitchen table is never directly in the middle of the kitchen. It is over to the side a little bit, but right now it's over to the side a lot. And I do like how much space it gives me in the kitchen. So now with the table where it is, like I could really feed all the cats here on the floor. The only problem is then I really can't use the table very much. So I don't know, maybe I could figure out a way to position it where it is more uh, toward the side of the room because where it is now over here, I mean, it's loaded with everything that was underneath my sink and I just pushed everything on top of the table just to get it out of the way. Um, but where it is right now, really three seats can be accessed and the fourth seat is really pushed against the wall. So the only time I would really need to pull it out is when I'm having like four people sit around the table. It might work here in the corner. I would have to move some other stuff out though. So one thing that I've learned from past renovations and past deliveries and stuff like that is that the neater the house is before the service people arrive, like the people that are installing the dishwasher or the people that are doing whatever they're hired to do, the neater they will work and the neater they will keep everything when they leave. So that's why I think it's really important to make sure everything is clean before they get here because then they will also leave it clean. They will realize, okay, well, it's clean. I'm going to make sure I keep it this clean when I leave versus when things are a little bit messy, then I find that they don't spend as much time keeping things clean behind them. So um, that's another reason why I want to make sure that everything um, is clean before the dishwasher installation people get here. The biggest issue that I have is in this room where I have two cat towers near the window. This is also my work from home office. It's my dining room, but I use it as a work from home office since I've been working from home and there's so much stuff in this room. It is like crazy. So I'm working on getting some of this stuff stashed away and just out of the way and just keeping things a little bit more organized. It is 5.30 p.m. and this is my beautiful new dishwasher. It is stainless steel to match my other appliances, which is so nice. The last dishwasher was black to match the previous appliances that were in this house. So when I bought this house, the kitchen had all black appliances and I replaced the refrigerator and the stove probably around four years ago, right before COVID and uh, I finally replaced the dishwasher because you know it was fine I just wanted to keep using it until I couldn't use it anymore so I am super super happy with this one it is so much quieter than the last one and this is what the inside looks like so um, definitely an upgrade the inside in here is all stainless steel which is nice this is all plastic, obviously. What I liked about this one is that these tines can fold down or they're adjustable. You can move them in different angles. They also fold down that way. So I thought that was, that was nice because sometimes you're trying to fit some stuff in. And the same thing down here on this one, it goes up, but it also, goes all the way down so if you want to fit some some certain sizes in there that works and what I also liked about this one is that it has the third rack on top here for utensils and for uh, serving utensils and this is going to be a huge help with everything that I use to make the homemade raw cat food um, so yeah I really like this third rack 
Also, the second rack in the middle has buttons on each side, and when you press these buttons, this rack can go up and down, depending on what you're putting in the dishwasher, if you need to make more room on top or on the bottom. I just got 11 stainless steel plates for the cats. They arrived yesterday. I just opened them up today, and look how perfectly they fit in this new dishwasher. Here's all 11 of them in a row. These are six inch stainless steel plates. They're heavier than I thought they would be. These are like four and a half ounces each. I thought they'd be a little bit lighter, but um, I still like them as an option instead of like ceramic plates for the cats. I think these are maybe a little bit lighter than ceramic or they might be the same weight as ceramic, but they're not gonna break if I drop them. And if I'm balancing seven plates, four plates, 11 plates, I like the safety factor that if they are dropped, they're not going to shatter. So very happy that they fit so nicely in the new dishwasher. Hello, Ziggy. Hello, Sammy. It is 9.15 p.m. There's Ringo. Hey, Ringo. Hello, Richard. Hello, Nancy. Hello, Goldie. Hello, Eva. So I just came downstairs to pick up any fleas that I see on any of the white fabric, the white sheets, and also to flea comb the cats one final time tonight. And I'm going to give them a little snack, and then I'm hoping to get to bed early. So here's the game. Just about to start flea combing her, and what I do first is I take a bunch of toilet paper and I break it down into you know individual squares. So I just make a pile of squares, and these are what I use to keep the fleas on the comb. Because if I comb a flea or two off of a cat, those fleas can potentially jump off of a comb. Ideally, the comb is supposed to trap the fleas in the comb, but a lot of times the fleas are moving around on the comb and sometimes they'll even jump off. So to keep that from happening, what I do is I cover the flea right away with a piece of toilet paper, like with a square of toilet paper, and then I hold the flea down until it could be drowned in this little swimming pool of water and dish detergent. And it's been working really good. I just found a live flea on this couch and there's another live flea over there. I could see it walking around. And these toilet paper squares also work really good on just picking up a flea, like pinching a flea in the toilet paper, and then drowning it. It is 10 a.m. and here's Boo. And I just combed him with this flea comb. This is my second favorite flea comb. I still like the white one better because it's like longer this way. But this one has the uh, widest tines, like the longest tines. And today was the first day I got no fleas off of him. He's been grooming himself, but he hasn't really been like scratching or itching or anything. And yeah, I went over him really good with this comb. And he does have some scabs on the back of his neck, which I've been um, hitting by mistake. I'm trying not to touch those. Um, I did put some Vetericin on his neck and he let me do that um, because like right here he has a scab. He has some scabs back here, probably from um, when he was itching the fleas. I'm seeing improvement, but like I gave the cats the advantage flea medicine the day before yesterday and I, I, I was really expecting to see more fleas die from that medicine because they say in 12 hours all the fleas are dead, but... That has not been the case. I've been getting fleas off of the cat since they've had that medicine. So, I don't know, maybe it's like a delayed response. I'm just going to see. If all the fleas are dead today, it'll be good. But if I'm still combing live fleas on these cats who have had that medicine, I'm not really happy about that. But we're just taking it one day at a time. There's like a 14-day flea cycle. So, just going to make sure that I continue to comb the cats and do extra vacuuming and cleaning. I just combed Simba the best that I could while he's on top of this cat tower and I found no fleas. I just combed Stella a lot and I found no fleas. Here's Splash. I found a few fleas on Splash but they might be dead because they weren't really moving around and I really can't give him a really good flea comb so I probably only like half combed him or a third combed him 
because he moves around a lot and he doesn't really like it. So I do the best that I can. It is 10.30 a.m. and I fed the cats in the kitchen to test this out. I've tried to feed them here in the past and it didn't work out really well, but it worked out a little bit better today because they have more room. But then what happened was Stella started hearing some of the kittens on the other side of the door and then she got distracted, but that was Stella's plate. She ate the majority of it, which is fine. Boo, I'm watching because the last time that they had chunky beef like this, he overate. He ate all of his and whatever was left on anyone else's and then he vomited. So right here, that's Simba's plate. He ate more than half of it. That's fine. He doesn't have to finish it if he doesn't want to. And that plate up there in the far corner was Splash's plate. Splash was the first done. He ate everything. He was really happy with his meal. So I'm just keeping an eye on Boo. If he finishes his plate, then I'm going to pick all the other ones up and then they're done. Then I feed the downstairs cats. But I just have to make sure that Boo does not eat all of his as well as the leftovers on the other plates. I ended up picking up the other plates and then I moved Boo's plate over here and he's done. He pretty much finished it all. He could go back and lick that clean if he wants to, but that's good enough, Boo. Okay? Hope you're happy. It's about 10.40 a.m. I hear Ziggy, she's on the trampoline. So I just um, went around and I picked up any black specks that were on here and that were on here on the sofa and that were on here, Boo's old day bud. So there weren't really many specks to pick up that looked like fleas today. Um, I saw more like pieces of cat litter, if that makes any sense. So now the next thing I need to do is flea comb as many of these guys as I can, and then they're gonna get their breakfast. Look at what's going on here. Okay, you missed it because Sammy just went to play with Goldie. But what was happening was, come here, Sammy, come here. Come on, Sammy. I was combing Sammy and Ziggy kept putting her paw out. She's like, comb me, comb me. Every time I comb somebody else, then Ziggy follows me around and she wants me to comb her. I already combed her. So it ends up, I've been getting, I don't know, like five or six fleas of off of each cat that I've been combing. Everyone is eating the chunky beef, except for Goldie because she was eating here. Richard was eating here. Then when I walked to the other side of the room to get the camera, uh, Goldie, freaked out and she ran that way, but she'll be back. She took some food with her. I just came back upstairs and there's Boo's plate, so he did finish more of it. It's 3.53 p.m. I'm cleaning up the kitchen, putting stuff back where it was before the dishwasher came. And Sammy was just sitting in that little tiny box. Yeah. She's been talking to me for a while now. I gave her some treats, but she doesn't want the treats. I don't know what she wants. It is 7 p.m. Look at these cats. There's like five cats. Three on the sofa, two on the daybed. I don't know where the other two cats are. They're somewhere. Here's Ziggy. And here's Nancy. They love freshly laundered sheets. There's Goldie. There's Sammy. And there's little Eva, so it's all five girls. So the question is, where are the boys? Ringo was under there earlier. I don't know if he's still under there, but I'm not gonna disturb him. I'm in the back room right now, and I don't see anyone here. I don't see Richard, I don't see Ringo, so maybe one of them. Maybe they're both under the mini trampoline. Look at this. Ziggy moved over to be near Nancy. So the reason why I came downstairs is to flea comb everyone. Um, I just put new sheets on maybe like an hour ago. And after I did that, I vacuumed everything down here. I vacuumed everything upstairs. Um, I need to put the dirty sheets in the dryer. I, it sounds like the washing machine is finished. So I'll move those over to the dryer and then I'm going to flea comb everyone. And then everyone's going to eat dinner. And then we're good. Who's getting comb first? Ziggy?
Ziggy, I found a bug on you. Ziggy, we gotta get rid of all your bugs. No bugs for Ziggy. Okay, let's get rid of all of your bugs. Mm -hmm. No bugs for Ziggy. I just found a flea on the sheet. You're good, Ziggy. You're good. Just stay still, and we'll get all of the bugs off of you, okay, Ziggy? Okay? No bugs for Ziggy. No bugs for Ziggy. Okay, Ziggy, no bugs. No bugs. Don't let no bugs on you, Ziggy. Okay? No bugs for Ziggy. Good, Ziggy. You only had one bug so far. You only had one bug. Oh, there's another bug, Ziggy. Don't sit on it. Ziggy, there's another bug. They're falling off of you. The bugs are falling off of you, Ziggy. Hmm? Everybody's relaxing. Well, Ziggy, we gotta get all these bugs off of you. All of them. I don't want no bugs. No bugs, Ziggy. None. Okay? No bugs for Ziggy. No bugs for Ziggy. Okay. Ziggy, I think there's a bug on there. There's a bug on there, Ziggy. Okay, Nancy, you're next. You're next, Nancy. Nancy, we gotta get all your bugs off. Nancy, I found a bug on you. Nancy, you got a bug. You had a bug. Okay, Nancy, I got one bug so far. One bug off of Nancy so far. Let's do your neck. Two bugs off of Nancy. Got another bug off of Nancy. Okay, Nancy. It's two bugs so far. Ziggy, don't let Nancy's bugs jump on you. Ziggy, don't let Nancy's bugs jump on you. Okay? The bug, three bugs on Nancy. Nancy, you're full of bugs.
It is 9.30 a.m. Hello, Boo. And Boo just got flea combed. And I combed him really, really good. He really, really enjoys it. And I did not find any fleas. No fleas on Boo. He still itches a little bit, but he does have some scabs from where the fleas were. And I think that might be what's causing him to itch. And I have been putting some Vetericin on the back of his neck. So, um, he doesn't like it. The first time he didn't know what was going on, but now that he knows what's going on, he runs. Like, he actively runs from it, so I have to kind of trick him. Here's Stella. So, I tried flea combing Stella, and I didn't even get, like, halfway through a proper flea comb. And she started attacking me, because she gets like that. And Simba, I was able to comb him, and I found zero fleas on Simba. It is 9.45 a.m. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Ziggy. These are their dinner plates from last night. Good morning, Ringo. So they took the white fabric off of the rebounder. Hey, Ringo, I'm checking for fleas, okay? So one thing that I have noticed over the past few days is that there is a noticeable reduction in the amount of like stuff on these sheets every day. Like, the first few days, there was a lot of, like, flea dirt and stuff. Sammy. That's Sammy's favorite tunnel. She's claimed it as her own. So I'm going to have to flea comb all the cats today. Here is the the day bed. And, yeah, I see a, I see a flea on it. But overall, um, a lot less stuff on it than previous days. There's Ziggy. Here's Nancy and Richard. I just flea combed Sammy, Nancy, Richard, and Ziggy. And let me tell you what happened when I flea combed them. So I got a few fleas off of all of them. And then with Sammy and Ziggy, the only fleas that I got off were on like the first swipe of the flea comb. So what I do is I take the flea comb and since it's nice and wide, it has a good surface area, and I just go from like the top of their head, down their back, to the tail. And both times, um, when I did it on Ziggy, when I did it on Sammy, I got like two fleas off each of them. And then when I continued to comb them, I got no other fleas off of them. So that was really good. Richard had a few more fleas. I would say he probably had maybe like six or seven fleas. And Nancy had the most fleas. I don't know, maybe she had like eight or ten fleas. Um, it wasn't like a crazy amount, but I just kept combing and combing and combing until I was combing for a while and not getting any more fleas off of them. So hopefully we can make some progress with these fleas. I mean, we're still going through the flea cycle. It's from what I've heard, it's like a two week cycle and these flea traps continue to catch fleas. They are by no means full. There's plenty of room in these flea traps to catch more fleas. Maybe it's a good sign that, like, I'm not coming down here every day and seeing a whole bunch of new fleas in these flea traps. So what I'm going to do next is give everyone breakfast down here, and then we'll see how the rest of the day goes.
Nancy, don't eat the camera. Don't eat the camera, Nancy. Don't eat the camera, Nancy. It's 1 p.m. and here's Boo. He's been laying on the bed in his favorite spot. Let me tell you what just happened. So I walked in the room to get something and Splash was laying here, like right here where Boo's standing right now. That's where Splash was laying. And he was so calm. Like he was just so calm. So I petted him like this. I just petted him a few times. And I was like, you know what? I bet if I got a flea comb right now, I could really give him a good flea combing. So I went and I got the flea comb, the good flea comb. And I gave Splash the most thorough flea combing that I've been able to give him so far. And I am very happy to report that he had zero fleas. I got zero fleas off of Splash. So it seems that the combination of the Capstar and the Advantage 2, as well as daily vacuuming and laundry, has really helped um, control the fleas as far as the upstairs cats go which is right now Boo, Stella, Splash, and Sibba, the older cats and so that is really good and I would like to see the same thing happen downstairs. The problem downstairs is that three of the cats cannot be brushed so I have to do everything that I can to all the other cats and to the environment um, and hope that it translates to the three cats that I currently cannot brush or comb. And I need to figure out ways to try to make progress with that. Every time I try to make progress with those three cats, they just get freaked out. So I gotta, I gotta do some more work with that. But right now, um, the goal is just to get the fleas under control. So as I am, as I am petting Boo, I could still feel like scabs around his neck and I'd like to put some more of the Veteracin spray on it, but, you know, he flips out, so I don't know. Hopefully they'll just heal. There's, like, one right here. What is that, boo? Yeah, it's like a, it's like a dry scab thing. Horrible. Boo, I hope you're doing better. I hope you're feeling better, okay? He's definitely itching less than he has been itching, like, way less. 
and all the other cats are itching less also. Even the downstairs cats, I noticed that they're not itching as much. So last week before I went away on like an overnight trip, I noticed that they were itching more than usual, but I really didn't think it like it was a flea infestation. Um, and then when I got home and like everyone was scratching like crazy, I was like, yeah, there has to be something going on here. And I'm so thankful I was able to finally, finally get some uh, fleas off of one of the cats with the flea comb. Because every single time previous, whenever I flea combed anyone, I never got any fleas. Now it could be that this is just a very recent um, flea infestation. And that's why I'm finally getting the fleas off. But I'm just really happy to have the new flea combs. The newer flea combs are so much better. It is so worth the extra money to pay more for a really good flea comb than to use just the smaller, not good ones. And even the smaller, not good ones are not necessarily that cheap. I mean, I was buying them at Petco. Petco is supposed to be, you know, decent quality. So... So here's where Boo has been like over grooming and stuff. So hopefully that'll grow back. Boo says don't show that. Boo says don't show that to people. Okay, Bo. I won't show that to people. Okay, you relax. Okay. You relax, Boo. Hello, Stella. It is 11.10 a.m. And the cats just had their breakfast. And before they had their breakfast, they were all flea combed, except for Splash, because he only let me comb him, like, a few times. I did not find any fleas on Stella. I found one flea on Boo, one flea on Simba, and I found two fleas on Splash. But, as I mentioned, he really did not let me give him a good combing. So what I'm hoping is that later... If he's relaxed and laying on the bed, I'll be able to really comb him well, like I did yesterday afternoon. So yesterday afternoon, Splash was laying on the bed with Boo, and I don't know if Simba was on the bed or not, but he was so relaxed that I was able to really, really comb him well, and I did not find any fleas on him yesterday. I don't know if these are new fleas that are like recently hatched or... I don't know if he picked them up because the kittens were upstairs during the day yesterday. So we'll see what happens. Good morning, Ringo. Good morning, Nancy. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Ziggy. So the routine is I look through the white sheets to see any specks that look like fleas and pick them up. And then after I do that, everyone... And then after I do that, everyone gets flea combed. So I have to give Ziggy a flea comb to hold on to. 
while I comb her because she likes chewing on the flea comb. Also, if I go back to this small one from Petco, it's like a toy comb versus the better one that I've been using, the, uh, the JW. So I got about, I don't know, six or seven fleas off of Ziggy today. Now I'm gonna move on to the next cap. Be nice. Be nice. Be nice. She just wants to give me love bites. Be nice. It's okay, Ziggy. You're okay. Okay, next cat. Next cat got to be brushed. You can have this one. It's about 5.45 p.m. right now. Here's Goldie and Sammy. There's a skeleton hand on the sofa. I bought that at the Dollar Tree because I was hoping, well, maybe then I could, you know, pet some of the cats with it. Got pretty close to Goldie, but not close enough. Um, I see some specks that look like they could be fleas on the sheet. So I'm going to clean those up. I'm defrosting their dinner, and it's only like half defrosted right now. Goldie wants Sammy to lick her head. Goldie's like, give me some grooming, Sandy. Sammy's like, none now. So I believe this is a salad tong. Like, um, they sell these in sets of two, like, you know, salad whatever they call them, salad forks. Look at this, oh my God, guys. Guys, look at that. That's Goldie. I don't, I don't think she even realized what she was doing. This is Sammy. So I can pet like the cats that I could pet with this, there's no problem. And that was really close for Goldie. So Ziggy and little Eva have been relaxing on this day bed. So I'm just about to start some cleaning right now. I need to scoop all the litters and refill all of the water bowls and, um, I don't know, maybe flea comb the cats or look for fleas and stuff like that. I'm thinking of getting diatomaceous earth and sprinkling that on the carpet and then vacuuming it up. The problem is um, I read information that says, you know, you have to keep it there for like, two days. Other people say you only have to keep it there for a few hours. Um, and also I was going to buy some baking soda because I've also heard that if you sprinkle baking soda and salt on the carpet, um, that can really help with fleas. So I actually went out to the Dollar Tree today because they have baking soda and needed to get a few things. And this I did not need to get, but I saw it and I picked it up. And I've never seen the shelves so empty at the Dollar Tree. I mean, it was crazy. They had no baking soda. Um, I wanted to get some cleaning supplies. They were wiped out of those two, out of the ones I wanted to get. So I don't know. Hopefully it's only because it's um, like a Sunday and maybe they'll restock this weekend. I don't know what's been going on. So um, I know Saturday is a very, very popular shopping day at that location. So 
Maybe they sold out of a lot of stuff. I don't know. Maybe they've been having trouble getting inventory in. I don't know. So, anyway, I thought we'd check on the cats right now. Hey, Goldie. I put it back on the couch and she jumped on the couch to get it. Remember, Goldie's in love with Sammy. She's been in love with Sammy for a long time. She's purring so loud right now. Here's Richard. He's in a cat tower. He's been taking a nap here. And here's Nancy. Nancy and Richard love these cat towers. It's what they love to do in the afternoon. They hang out here. So the problem is today, is our second rainy day in a row. It's just been nonstop rain. So it's been really gloomy and dark. And there's really not much to look at outside the windows. And it's been a very sleepy day because when the weather's like this, all you really want to do is relax and sleep, right, Nancy? I haven't had a whole lot of motivation to do much of anything today or yesterday. So I've been taking it as a good opportunity to relax, catch up with some, some things around the house. Richard's purring. You purring, Richard? It's 7 a.m. and I was looking for Stella and Splash. And look where they are. They've been sleeping together on the day sofa in Boo's room. Boo just walked in and he's looking at them like, what's going on in here? Boo slept on my bed last night. Splash is so happy. I've never seen them sleeping like this. So I thought Stella was sleeping on the day sofa because she has slept there a few nights since the sheets have been on them. I have the white sheets on this day sofa also, um, you know, to check for fleas. And I've been keeping this room shut when the kittens are upstairs during the day just to try to keep fleas out of it. And I haven't seen any fleas on the day sofa yet. <laughs> Pooh's uh, in the room. That's what Stella's looking at. Pooh's ready to jump up by the windows. So, um, I've never seen Splash sleeping with Stella on the day sofa like this, ever. There's Boo right there. So, um, yeah, this is a first. And Boo just left the room. Hmm, I wonder why. So, Boo's been itching a lot still. So here's Boo, and, you know, I flea-combed him yesterday. He had no fleas. I think he's itching from the remnants of the previous fleas because he does have some scabs and stuff. So, I don't know, I'm trying to keep an eye on him. I'm also trying to put some of that Veteracin spray that I used on Ditto's wounds on um, Boo where he has the scabs, like, around the back of his neck and stuff, but he's afraid of it. But I try to put it on anyway. It is 8, 10 a.m. Here's Stella. So Stella got flea combed, and Boo got flea combed, and Simba got flea combed. Here's Boo. <laughs> and I found zero fleas. No fleas on Boo, no fleas on Simba, no fleas on Stella. And Splash only let me like run a comb through him like maybe three or four times. I did not find anything on Splash. However, I did see a flea on the white vomit blanket on my bed. And I know it was a flea because as I was about to pick it up with like a, I usually kind of squeeze them in a piece of tissue paper or a piece of toilet paper. 
it jumped and disappeared. So that's how I know it was a little flea. So not happy about that, but I was very happy with the fact that I did not get any fleas off of Boo, Simba, or Stella, so that is good. So I'm just going to continue with the same routine of flea combing the cats twice a day, vacuuming twice a day, and doing laundry every day. I gave the cats the other salad tongue. They like to be scratched with it. Right, Boo? It actually makes a really good back scratcher. It is 9 a.m. So the upstairs cats have gotten some playtime. They've gotten fed. And now I just came downstairs. And here's Sammy with the skeleton hand. Here's Ziggy. Hey, Ziggy. Hello. Good morning. So um, just going to go about the routine. First, I'm going to pick up anything that looks like a flea. And then I am going to flea comb the cats. And then I am going to vacuum, and then they're going to get their meal, right? Right, Ziggy? How you doing today? Oh, you're itchy? Okay, I'm going to make sure. Make sure you get a good flea combing. I think it's around 4 p.m. right now. I just came downstairs to find the camera, and here's Nancy and Ziggy. And there's Richard. I see what looks like a flea on that sheet. I'm gonna have to pull it off. Here's Goldie and little Eva was sitting next to her and I see some specks on that sheet also. And here's Sammy. It is 12.45 p.m. and here's Stella, she's on the bed. And here's Boo, he's on the bed. I actually got a few fleas off of Boo this morning. So I would really like to put um, like at least the top of the bedding in the wash today, but I've been doing wash all morning. I've been washing other things. There is definitely a war against these fleas. 
Here's Splash. He is on top of the cat tower. So last night I covered the top of the cat tower with baking soda and salt because I've heard that that is good at helping to kill off any kind of flea eggs, larvae, anything that might be up there. The reason why I did that is because Simba was where Splash is pretty much all day yesterday. And then when I combed him at night, I got a bunch of fleas off of him. When I say a bunch for him, it was maybe five or less. So I was like, well, where is he getting them from? And I was like, okay, well, maybe he's getting them from this cat tower. So uh, instead of throwing the whole cat tower out, um, I put the baking soda and uh, salt on top of it. And then I covered it with a black plastic bag because I didn't want anyone like laying in the baking soda. And this morning I vacuumed it all up. I had like a cat blanket in here. I took that out and that's gone through the wash. These are vacuum pieces. I just like really cleaned this the best that I could clean it. And so here is Splash. And that is the new penthouse. So I also realized that that penthouse has not been really cleaned or washed in quite a while. So I took it down and, you know, it's, it's really old. You don't realize how fast the years go by. I'd say it's a good four or five years old. So I don't think it would make it through a wash cycle on hot because with these fleas, I have to wash everything on hot. And it was in pretty bad shape. It was torn up in places, so I ended up throwing it out. I cleaned off the top of this armoire really well. And then I put a fresh blanket and there's Simba. He's enjoying uh, relaxing up there. And of course, I vacuumed up here. I've also vacuumed downstairs. Look at Boo's claws. And I just got off the phone with the vet's office. So I called the vet that Boo went to a few months ago. And I figured, well, let me ask them if they know of any natural remedies that actually work or any, like, what they suggest for fleas. So I let them know. I was like, you know, I was there a few months ago. I took my cat in for a checkup. And right now we're dealing with fleas. What do you guys suggest? She said that they basically just suggest bathing the cat, combing the cat, vacuuming, cleaning, laundry, pretty much everything that I've been doing. And then I told her about, um, you know, Capstar, that I used that. So she's like, yeah, they've actually used that on some kittens that were um, really badly infested with fleas and on their deathbed. And the Capstar actually saved the kittens uh, because it works really well. And she was telling me that that can be used often. And I mentioned that I actually gave two of the cats a second dose today, which I should also mention to you guys that Ringo and Eva got a second dose today. I was going to give Goldie a second dose also, but she was coughing um, like when I went downstairs and I didn't know if it was like an asthma attack or a hairball. So I figured, let me just like hold off. I could always give it to her tomorrow. We'll, we'll just see how she does today. I do notice that every so often Goldie does cough and in the position that she, you know, she puts her head low and to me it kind of looks like an asthma attack. So I just try to make sure that she stays calm. She usually bounces right back after that. So, I mean, I don't know if it is a hairball because today it looked like she was like coughing something up and then she would like swallow it and then she would like cough something up and then like swallow it. So I do keep her under observation just to see what's going on with that. So I didn't give her the cap star today. So back to the phone conversation. So, um, you know, I told her about that and I told her that I gave them the advantage and the advantage to did nothing. And then I said in the past, um, I've gotten revolution from, you know, a different vet. And she said that they don't even deal with revolution. They don't deal with like any kind of chemicals for uh, fleas they really prefer the natural route, which is just a lot of cleaning. And then she also mentioned the diatomaceous earth. And I told her that I actually have that on order from Amazon right now, and I'm waiting to get that. That's either going to arrive today or tomorrow. Um, so once I get that, then I'm hoping to put that on carpeting and um, stuff like that. We'll see how that goes. So then I asked her about essential oils and I was like, do you guys recommend any kind of essential oils that, you know, I can use as a spray or something? And she said, hold on, I think we do have an old recipe here. So then she did give me an old recipe 
uh, for a flea repellent for cats and I actually do have all of the essential oils in the recipe. It only uses two or three essential oils. She gave me the amount of drops that you put in one quart of water, you add a splash of vinegar and then you spray it on the cat and she's like obviously you don't spray it in their face but um, it's supposed to help repel fleas. I might try that later today but I've been doing so much cleaning I am like completely out of paper towels um, and I did go out to Target early today pretty much when they opened. So I bought four of these plastic storage bins. I think these are like 66 quart. They were a nice size and I'm already using two of them. So what I want to use them for is to put dirty laundry in one, seal it shut, and then just keep it sealed until I get it into the washing machine. That way there's no fleas jumping anywhere. And then the other one I'm using for clean laundry. So when I get laundry out of the dryer, it goes straight into one of these tubs and then I seal it up and then I can move it wherever in the house I need to move it. And what I've realized since I've been back is that I'm probably going to have to go out and buy more of these because I have so much laundry in my laundry room right now that I need to put in these tubs and then put it in my storage room in the back of the basement because I'm trying to keep that room off limits to fleas and also my laundry room off limits to fleas and I'm hoping by keeping things in plastic tubs it's just gonna keep fleas off of them I mean it should if they're clean once they're in the plastic tub so I'm probably gonna go buy some more another thing that I bought in Target were these white knee socks these were the only ones that they sold I wanted just like plain smooth ones but as you can see these have like they have like, you know, a pattern, they have like ridges, which is, you know, not the best um, because the reason why I got these white socks and I do have like my pants tucked into them is so that when I'm walking around, I can see any fleas that might be jumping on me. Like right now, there's no fleas on me. And what I do is I check to make sure there are no fleas on me if I'm moving from like zone to zone. So if I'm moving from like upstairs here to downstairs, I check that there's no fleas, I'm not carrying fleas, you know, from upstairs to downstairs or more importantly from downstairs to upstairs since the majority of the fleas are downstairs. Also, if I'm walking into the laundry room or the storage room, I make sure that there are no fleas on these socks and I am shocked by how many fleas I'm seeing jump onto these socks. So I have two of those tarot flea traps running nonstop downstairs. And while they have caught some fleas, there are plenty of fleas that they have not captured. So that is why uh, I'm like really shocked at how many fleas I'm seeing jump onto my socks. The most I've seen at any one time is probably like five or six fleas. But other than that, like I'll look and there'll be like one or two fleas. What I do is I wrap them up in a little piece of toilet paper and then I drown them in water with dish soap. So that's what I've been doing. So I always keep some toilet paper in my back pocket. So wherever I'm going, if I do see a flea on the socks, I just grab them in the toilet paper and then I drown them. And the reason why I have to grab them with the paper is because, you know, fleas jump and you never even want to open the paper and look at it. You just want to grab them in the paper, twist it tightly, almost like you're making like a little dumpling, a little flea dumpling, and then drown them in the dumpling. So uh, I'm really happy about these socks. I'm so happy that I actually purchased um, three more pairs of white knee socks from Amazon and those are due here either today or tomorrow. I bought some white sweatshirts when I was in Target today also and I haven't seen any fleas jump on my sweatshirts. Um, usually the fleas don't go anywhere like above my knees. I'm just gonna continue with wearing white knee socks around the house. So yesterday I kept the kittens downstairs and I comb them three times and it really got to the point where they just don't enjoy being flea combed and you know I don't really blame them that's a piece of toilet paper I have to pick up and what I had to do this morning was actually bribe them with treats I was like okay I'll give you one treat for every flea you let me comb off of you so that worked really really well here's Nancy and I know the cats want to go upstairs but I just want to keep the fleas contained down here for now so what I did was I put some cat treats in my pocket and before I knew it all four of the cats that let me comb them were here on the couch on this fresh white sheet 
and I was just saying, okay, here's a treat, Ziggy, and then I combed her until I got a flea, and then I just did the same thing for all the cats, so they made out pretty good. Um, they didn't have too many fleas out of all the cats Nancy had the most. Here's Nancy. I don't know where she was getting the fleas from, but I do know that out of all the cats, she's the one that they all rub up against. I've seen Goldie rub up against her. I've seen Ringo rub up against her. I've seen Eva rub up against her. So I think that's where she's getting her new fleas from, from the other cats rubbing up against her. And right now I do see a flea like right here. I'm gonna have to squash that into a piece of paper and drown it. What I also wanna do, and I keep forgetting, is I need to find my lint rollers because the sticky paper in these flea traps basically reminds me of like a lint roller. So anytime I see a stray flea, like right there, instead of grabbing it, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if I could just get it on a lint roller and trap it there and then it's gonna die. So what I'm starting to wonder is if these fleas in this flea trap are actually dead or if they're just motionless. So when you use a flea trap that has like water in it, the fleas drown and it kills the fleas. But with these flea traps, they stick to the paper, but do they actually die? I I'm just not really happy with these flea traps at all. Like, yeah, there are fleas on them, but there should be a lot, lot more fleas on them. Here's Goldie. Now, what I realized yesterday or the day before is that this slipcover has never been washed yet. So one of the things I need to do is take this slipcover off of this chair and put this through the wash also. So just walking downstairs, there are two fleas on this sock and there's a flea on this sock. So I'm gonna have to pull the fleas off and then I'll go upstairs. I'm not taking these fleas upstairs with me. It is 4 p.m. I just got home. I went to the Costco Business Center. So before I left, this is what I did. I took a mixture of baking soda and salt and I sprinkled it all over this rug. I also put a plate of water and dish detergent in the middle because people are saying that that attracts fleas, but there's no fleas in it. So the reason I put the baking soda and the salt on the rug is because that is supposed to kill and dry out any kind of flea eggs or larva or anything like that. So um, it's been on there for a few hours now. I did the same thing for the hallway rug. And I also did the same thing for the rug in Boo's room and I put another one of these plates with water and dish soap and I see nothing in there so those don't work. Or maybe they do work and there just aren't any fleas up here that want to jump in. So here's Stella and Boo, they're relaxing on the bed. That is one of the freshly laundered cat beds on the bed. Simba's still up in the penthouse. And here's Splash, he's laying in this bed. So what I want to do is I want to keep the baking soda on the rugs until it's time for these guys to come out of this room and have their dinner. So maybe in like two hours, since it's four now, maybe at like six. I bought some more storage containers from Costco. These are like three for $21. They're not as big as the ones that I got at Target, but they're still a really good size. I bought some of these aluminum pans. I figure I can make some more flea traps with those. I bought a 25 pound bag of salt to use on the carpets. And I think this is like a 10 pound bag of baking soda, might be more than that. Um, I bought a bunch of paper towels because I'm down to my last roll. Then in this bag, I have some vinegar. So lots of cleaning supplies. It is 7.30 p.m. It's already dark out. I am running behind schedule and I just wanted to point out that these plates with water and soap did absolutely nothing. No fleas. So I'm going to take it as a good sign that there's no fleas here and the one in Boo's room is empty also. What I have to do now is get the vacuum and vacuum up all of this baking soda before I let the cats out of my room. They're ready to come out and eat. So I got my Amazon order today of my new white knee socks and just walking around cleaning up those two plates of water, there are three, there's four fleas, four fleas on these socks. So obviously those plates of water and soap don't work. So here's Boo, he was hanging out with me in the kitchen for a while as I was cleaning things up and getting their dinner ready. And he ate dinner with Stella, Splash and Simba. They have been eating in the kitchen. And this is where he comes, like this is his safe spot right now, this area of the bed. 
and I really want to put this bedding in the laundry, but he's like already laying here, so I might have to do it um, tomorrow. Um, the other thing is that this uh, vomit blanket, it, uh, it takes longer to dry because I can't dry it on high. Um, this duvet cover I could. I have to see if I have any other white sheets or blankets or anything that I could put on the bed um, while this is in the laundry. It's 10.30 a.m. Here is Simba. Today started out as a great day. I combed the cats. He did not have any fleas. Boo did not have fleas. I got fleas off of Stella. And I put my bedding in the washing machine to wash it. When I opened the dryer to see if anything was in the dryer, that's when my problem started. So when I opened the dryer, what I noticed was that the lint from the previous load had not been filtered out. It was just like still in the dryer. And that was really strange. So I looked at the lint filter and the lint filter was clear. So I was like, why is the lint not filtering? So I looked it up and they said, well, if your dryer vent is clogged, then your lint is not gonna filter. So the next thing that I did was come outside and look at the dryer vent. Now it did not look like this when I saw it. What it looked like was it had three of these louvers and the bottom one was all stuck in like a bunch of lint. So I went to take the lint out and the bottom louver just completely crumbled off in my hand. And then here's part of the outside frame. So this dryer vent is so old, the plastic is literally crumbling. And the reason why is because I've been doing like four or five loads of laundry every day on high. So I guess it, it really can take all of the heat that's been coming out of it. Right now I do have some bedding in the dryer so there is warm air coming out of here. But I had to go to Home Depot today and buy a new vent cover. And then I came home and I realized I cannot find my screwdriver. So it's a Phillips head screwdriver and I know I have at least two of them, cannot find any of them. So then I had to go to Lowe's and I just bought a screwdriver. So now I'm gonna take this off and put a new one on. I ended up getting this Craftsman six piece, six in one screwdriver. It was on sale, I think it was like $7.98. And it has two uh, Phillips heads, two flat heads, and then it has like these two very small uh, wrench heads. So I'm hoping it works well. I really liked the comfort handle on this. It's a really like soft uh, handle. So that's another reason why I got this one. So the screws came right out, no problem. I was concerned because the ends of them were really rusty, but it wasn't an issue. So I just took the old cover off. It was a little tricky to pull it out. I'm thinking I should get some paper towels and like wipe out whatever I could wipe out of here. So here's the new dryer vent cap. There's some debris on it from where the price tag was. It took me forever to get the price tag off and there's still some sticky stuff on it. So that's why on like the bottom there, there's some discoloration. I attached it to the uh, dryer vent as best as I could. And then I screwed the top two screws in and I pushed the bottom in just to make sure it was secure. I don't know why um, the previous owners did not put screws on the bottom also. Those screws are long enough that they could go through the bottom and then into uh, the siding, like the top screws. So I don't know why they didn't do that. Um, so I might have to come back and maybe like put some caulk around the bottom, but the old caulk is still in there. So for now it's good. I do plan on revisiting this uh, in the near future. I just needed something to put up quickly so that animals do not get in because I have so many critters in my yard. Um, I don't need anything getting into this dryer vent. It is 11.15 and now I could finally come downstairs and take care of the kittens or these cats um, for their morning routine. Here's Richard. There's Sammy. So I did come down here a little while ago um, to put the laundry in and I did take um, one of the lint rollers and I rolled the sofa. There were some fleas on the sofa and the lint rollers worked really good with that. And then what I do is I cut off the paper and then I fold it on each other. So then the fleas are stuck in like a sticky paper sandwich. Um, and then I dispose of it. Here is Ziggy. So I'm just gonna walk around, uh, see if there's any hairballs or anything. Boo had a hairball this morning and then Simba vomited a little bit. Um, so I'm just gonna see if there's anything like that going on down here. And then I'm gonna start vacuuming. 
I just gave Goldie a caps jar today in this little crunchy plate. I put it in part of a churu with a little bit of freeze-dried chicken on top to get her to eat it. And the reason why I gave it to her was because she did not get one yesterday, but Ringo and Eva did. And today, I was actually able to swipe her with the flea comb, and I got a flea off of her. So I know she still has fleas if I just happen to, like, randomly swipe her back and get a flea off of it. So she got a capster. Hopefully that'll kill any adult fleas on her. I flea combed the four cats that I can comb, and I used two death pools. So I used this. Um, it's like a like a larger measuring cup and I use this as a dip and I'll dip the entire flea comb in here. Can you see all of the fleas that I got off the cats? There must be at least 40 fleas that I got off the cats that I could uh, flea comb. And then this is the other death pool. So if, so if I see fleas on the comb, I dip it into this and I shake it around. And if any fleas are still stuck on here, then I grab a piece of toilet paper, like one square, and I wrap them up in it and I put them in this death pool. So I have two flea death pools right now and I've been using these blue wilderness cat treats as uh, like bribery to get the cats to let me flea comb them. So these have been working really well. I put some of these in my pocket and then I give whoever I want to comb one or two treats and then they let me comb them for a while. Then I have to like repeat the process with other cats or with the same cat. Got a lot of fleas off them, not happy about that, but we'll see what happens. I put new sheets on all the furniture down here. I'm actually thinking of ordering another set of sheets so that I could cover this chair also. This uh, slip cover. I've had this slip cover forever. It needs to go into the laundry. I should also mention that my white leggings arrived today. So I'm wearing my white leggings underneath these white knee socks. I could see any speck of anything that is on me. So it's wonderful. And I'm wearing them with a white t-shirt. So I am just in white and I can see any speck of anything on me. I feel like this is like my battle uniform. It's like, okay, time to put on my battle uniform and battle the fleas. I should also mention that I do like these socks much better than the other socks that I had from Target because the ones from Target were thicker and then they had a texture. So like a flea could get caught in the, like the knitting, um, but these are thinner and they're smoother. So it's just really easy to see the fleas, really easy to pick them off. The only thing that I know is going to be an issue is, I don't know if you could see, but the toes are like really light and that's where I'm probably going to end up getting holes in the toes, but that's okay. It's, it's worth it for the battle. It is 2 p.m. and here's Ziggy, here's Sammy, and there's Richard. So I have been spending the past hour or so doing work work like I work from home thank god I work from home because I would not be able to really get anything done if I was not working from home and so I'm sitting on my computer I'm doing work and I'm thinking to myself I wonder if humidity affects fleas because I'm trying to think well was there anything different this year that would cause a flea outbreak now this summer was the rainiest summer that I remember it felt like every single weekend we had rain both days we had rain during the week this was the first summer where I honestly I don't know if I even put my sprinklers on I think I put them on in May and then I never used them I remember I turned them off at one point in like early early summer Maybe it was like even late spring and I never turned them back on and I had green grass all summer because that's how rainy it was. And it's been raining the past three days nonstop. Today is the first day we're seeing sun and we've had cloudy days all summer. We've had rainy days all summer. So we've had like a lot of humidity. Here's Ziggy. So I decided to just poke around and, you know, are fleas affected by humidity looking up something like that? Well, it ends up that there's information out there that fleas cannot live in humidity lower than 50%. Now, I used to always have a dehumidifier running down here, especially in the summer, because I used to come down here and everything felt damp. 
This year, it didn't feel damp. I came down here and things did not feel damp, but it was the first summer that I did not use a dehumidifier down here. So I'm wondering if it is true that fleas are affected by humidity levels. I mean, it would make sense. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna find the dehumidifier, I think it's in the laundry room, and bring it out here and plug it in and see what the humidity levels are. I think I do have um, like a humidity sensor down here. Um, if not, I know I have one in the house somewhere. I just have to find it and bring it down here. There's Goldie. Goldie had the cap start today. So I've been uh, checking on her. That's really why I came down and I said, I want to see what's going on with Goldie. And I also want to talk about the dehumidifier and then um, bring the dehumidifier out. So um, yeah, so that's the plan. I'm going to check the humidity level down here and I'm going to run the dehumidifier no matter what. I mean, even if the humidity level is less than 50%, I'm going to run the dehumidifier anyway just to see if I notice a difference with um, the amount of fleas that I'm getting off the cats and also the amount of fleas that um, I'm just finding randomly around here. Now, there is also information that um, humidity level will not really affect the flea population because the fleas are going to be on the cat and the cat has like a microclimate in their fur. Um, they're also saying that, um, you know, when the fleas lay their eggs and the cocoons and all that, that's kind of like a microclimate. But I don't think it hurts to try. And I used to have two dehumidifiers down here, but right now I only have one. So I'm going to plug it in and just see if I notice a difference. Here is my very old temperature and humidity sensor. The top is the time, but it's not accurate. Um, so the temperature is 72.6 and the humidity is 53%. So the humidity is above 50%. So let's see what it is after I plug in the dehumidifier and run it for a while. Look, 54% humidity. And today is a sunny, dry day. So chances are that was higher over you know, the past few weeks where it's been raining so much. So here's the dehumidifier and I just plugged it in. It's kind of near the cat tower and I clean the filter and I have it running continuous on low. It sounds pretty high for low, but um, we'll see. Um, right now it says humidity is 65%. So that's even higher than the humidity sensor that I was looking at. So I have this set to continuous, so I'm just gonna see how low we can get the humidity down here. Usually my house has very low humidity throughout the year, except for during the summer. Here's Sammy, she's like, what is that sound? Why is that thing there and why is it making so much noise? You go check it out. I'm sorry, Sammy, it does make a lot of noise. Okay. So this is what the tarot flea trap looks like after about a week of use. As you can see, there are a lot of fleas on it, but I mean, that's just like the tip of the flea iceberg. There are so many more fleas not in this trap that I am super, super disappointed with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out this uh, sticky sheet and I actually do have another one to put in here and I'm gonna put it in here for like another week and let's just see if there's a difference will there be more fleas or will there be less fleas I figure that it can at least give me an idea of you know what the situation is look at this this looks like a baby mouse I don't know if it's sick like I don't know what the deal with it is but I just saw something moving and I was like that looks like a mouse's tail and this looks like a baby mouse or maybe a baby rat, I don't even know. I don't know if it's sick or what. So, I don't know. I don't know what it's doing here. I'm not gonna disturb it. Maybe I'll give it a little bit of food, maybe some water and see if it responds. So it's actually moving around a little bit. I don't know if it's sick. It might have fleas, I don't know. I don't know what you're supposed to do. I mean, it's a little bit big for a baby mouse. Maybe it's a baby rat.
I'm just about to throw out some trash and look what I found near my garbage cans. It looks like another, I don't know if these are baby mice, baby rats, I don't know what they are. Maybe it's a full grown mouse, I don't know. Mice can be really, really small. I don't know if they're sick, maybe someone poisoned them and they're in the process of dying. I don't know. It's really sad, whatever it is. I mean, I don't like mice and I don't want them in my house. I don't want them in my garage and the, these are both near my garage, but I'm not gonna squash them or kill them. But maybe that's the humane thing to do. I don't wanna do it though. Maybe they'll survive, maybe they won't, I don't know. So the mouse moved over here and it was just kind of laying here and I said, you know what, if, if it's on its like last legs, I'm gonna move it over to a happier final resting place. So I grabbed a piece of cardboard and I scooted it onto some cardboard and I moved it over underneath some bushes. So maybe it will recover and if not, um, That'll be its final resting place. And I did the same thing for the mouse that was over here. I moved it over underneath some bushes. This is the little mouse that I put underneath the bush. So it's, it's like wobbling around, but it's moving like a lot now. I don't know if it, I don't know if one of its front paws is like injured. I moved the water and the crackers over here. Maybe it's looking for its friend. Its friend is over there underneath the bush. Maybe it'll go that way. I'm surprised at how much it's moving around right now. I know nothing about mice. I don't know if this is like a super, super young baby mouse. Is it drinking? It's drinking some water. It sounds like a mouse though, it makes those little high-pitched squeaks. Now I know why Boo likes those squeaky toys. It was eating a little bit of a cracker before. Okay, maybe it's gonna run over there near near its friend underneath the, underneath the bush. I put this here so I kind of have an idea of where it is so I don't step on it and also so I can judge how far it's been moving around. This is what the other tarot flea trap looks like. This was the first one that I put downstairs. Lots of fleas on it. And again, this has been in use for a little over a week. So I'm gonna throw out that flea paper and put a fresh one in and we'll see how week two compares to week one. It is 6.15 p.m. and I just finished cleaning every litter box in the house. Taking them outside, scrubbing them down, cleaning everything that's like underneath them inside. And I have these bags left. Um, so I buy the Dr. LC's Ultra Litter in these, eight, in these 18 pound bags and then I save the bags because then when I scoop the litter, I'll scoop the litter into the bags and then throw them out. Here are three of the litter boxes downstairs and I went through eight uh, bags of litter and I have zero left in the house so I am going to go out this evening and pick up some more litter because I never like having zero extra litter. I like having it here just in case I need it for whatever reason. There's the other litter box and there's the other litter box and these are all extra large litter boxes. Some people might be like, wow, eight bags of litter, that's a lot of litter. Yeah, it is a lot of litter, but um, these are a total of nine litter boxes and they're all extra large litter boxes. These are not like medium litter boxes or even large litter boxes. These are extra large, so they do take a lot of litter. And while I was cleaning up the litter boxes, I found the ball that goes in this turbo scratcher. We haven't seen it in quite a long time. Sammy is so happy. It was in one of the far corners of that bathroom where I have the litter boxes. So she's been playing with this. The dehumidifier is now showing 55% humidity. So that's better than 65%, but we want that to go below 50. And here on this sensor, it says it's 47% humidity. So this says 47, 
The dehumidifier itself says 55, so I'm hoping for something in the middle. I would like to get another one or two humidity sensors, maybe another one down here so then I could take like an average, or another one upstairs. Ideally, I would like to have one down here, one upstairs, and then maybe another one that I can move back and forth um, to take an average. Look, this just went back up to 48. Here's Ziggy and Nancy, and every time I come down here to bring another litter box down, um, I've been looking for fleas, and anytime I see one, I just wipe them up with this lint roller. It has been working great. I got uh, quite a few fleas off of this daybed. And this is how I think Nancy's been getting her fleas. Not that Ziggy has fleas because I can also flea comb her, but like when the other cats lay near Nancy like that, it's really easy for the fleas to jump on Nancy that way. And Sammy was laying on this couch before and there were quite a few fleas on it, so I don't know if maybe they're already reacting to the lower humidity and jumping off of her and then like dying on the fabric. I don't know. This is a big experiment, so we're just going to see what happens with the dehumidifier. I heard that you have to keep the humidity below 50% for at least two days. So like at least 48 hours it has to be below 50% and then there should be a flea die off. So again, this is an experiment. We'll just see what happens. It is 10.30 a.m. and the cats are finishing their breakfast here in the kitchen. So they've been eating their meals in the kitchen and it's been working out really, really good because it's much easier to clean up after them. If they spill any food outside of their plates, I could just kind of wipe it really good versus picking stuff out of their play rug. So I'm very, very happy that they're eating here. This morning they have been flea combed and I vacuumed and I got like two fleas off of Boo, I got a few off of Simba, and I got a few off of Stella. Stella had the most fleas. Splash would not let me flea comb him, so I have to work on that. I went to TJ Maxx last night and I purchased more white sheets and I covered some additional furniture downstairs in the white sheets. On the agenda today is going back to Home Depot and purchasing another dehumidifier for use up here. So last night, I looked at the humidity sensor and it was 53% humidity up here, which is more than I want if I want to control fleas. And this morning it was 59% humidity, so it was even more humid. The reason why is we're supposed to have a wet gray day again today. So definitely gonna go to Home Depot. I looked at the dehumidifier I have downstairs and it's a 30 pint dehumidifier. And I purchased that nine or 10 years ago. That's how old that dehumidifier is. And I've used it every single summer except for this summer. And I don't know why I didn't use it this summer, probably because there's so many cats down there. I was like, all right, I'm not gonna take it out and make some noise and disturb them, but I should have done that. So. It's been running nonstop since yesterday. I went downstairs again today and it says 50% humidity on the dehumidifier. However, that dehumidifier only counts in increments of five. So the next lowest would be 45% humidity. The other humidity sensor downstairs said 41% humidity. So I'm thinking that the humidity is somewhere in the 40s. I have three hygrometers arriving today from Amazon. Um, so when I was in Home Depot yesterday, uh, I was looking to see what they sold, and they sold one for $24.99. I thought that price was a little high, so I looked on Amazon, and I could get three for less than the price of one at Home Depot. So that's what I did. I was standing in Home Depot ordering hygrometers on Amazon because they were cheaper, and they were a much better deal than what they had in Home Depot. They also only had two in Home Depot, and I'm getting three for less than the price of one. That should arrive today. Good morning, Nancy. So I've been downstairs already this morning to check on the dehumidifier. I also gave the cats a few treats. So they're ready for their breakfast. They had a super, super late dinner last night, almost midnight, because by the time I got home from running errands and then I had to vacuum and flea comb them, before you knew it, it was like 11.30, 11.45. So that's when they ate their their dinner, which is fine because they had a very late breakfast also. Hey Sammy, 
So this is what I do. I vacuum the upstairs and then I put the vacuum here because now I'm going to vacuum the downstairs and as soon as I vacuum the downstairs then I take this canister outside and I dump it into a bag and put it in the trash. Let me show you what happened last night. So last night after I vacuumed downstairs I cleaned up some plates and as you can see there's like an empty can of cat food, some paper towels, some pet wipes and I put them all in that plastic bag and I knotted it up very tightly and I put it on the back step and I figured okay well no one's gonna want to break into it because there's no cat litter in it. The last time I scooped out the cat litter, tied up a bag and just threw it outside raccoons got into it and I had to clean it up. But I was like okay there is no cat litter in here it should be fine there's just an empty can of cat food. Well all of a sudden the cats were like looking toward the patio last night and I was like what's going on out there and I look outside and there's a possum and a possum broke into the bag and was sniffing around looking for I guess food or something so yeah so after I vacuum downstairs I'm gonna take it outside and I'm gonna have to you know put all this back in a bag and throw it in the trash it is 11.30 a.m. Everyone is eating their breakfast and everyone got flea combed except for Goldie, Ringo, and Eva because I still can't comb them. And Nancy, Richard, Ziggy, and Sammy all had some fleas on them, but not like a crazy amount. Nancy still had the most out of any of the cats. I do feel like it was less fleas than yesterday. Actually, I know it was less fleas than yesterday because when I looked in that little death pool that I have for the fleas, there was definitely less fleas in it. And I also spent less time flea combing the cats, which is a good thing. Um, what I'll do is I'll, you know, comb them, get the flea off, get the fleas off, get the fleas off, get the fleas off. And then once I start combing them, if I comb them like, you know, 10 times and I don't get any fleas off, then I'm like, okay, you're good for now. And so I want to take that as a good sign. Um, I vacuumed everything, I cleaned everything up the best that I could. Something else I'm watching are the new flea trap inserts. So this one only has like three fleas on it and I feel like the last time I put a new insert in these, um, like the first night it had more than that. And then here's the other one and this one has more than the one I just showed you. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six. This one has nine fleas in it, so. I mean, there's still fleas jumping around, but I'm hoping we're moving in a positive direction. The dehumidifier still says 50 on it, so it hasn't moved yet. And I'm hoping it moves down to at least 45. And the only thing I'm really not happy about is the noise level of this dehumidifier. It's quite loud, but I'm really happy that it works. So it's a trade-off, and I am hoping that once the humidity starts getting lower, then it's going to click itself on and off instead of just being on all the time. It's almost 4 p.m. and this is the new dehumidifier that I bought at Home Depot today. This is a 35 pint dehumidifier. That means it pulls 35 pints of water out of the air over the course of a day. And I have it running. When I first put it on it was at 60% humidity. Right now it's down to 55% humidity, so I'm going to leave it here. I have it here in the living room near the hallway because I figure um, hopefully if I put it here it'll reach the majority of the air in the house because this is kind of like centrally located. Uh, there's rooms pretty much on all sides of this, so we'll see, we'll see how this does. And these are the humidity sensors that I bought on Amazon. They arrived today also. Um, so there's three of these. Um, I put the batteries in. One of these is downstairs and I verified that the humidity downstairs is less than 50 right now. So that is good. Um, this one I have in the hallway and it says it's 57%. Then I have another one in my bedroom that says it's around 60%. It's a little higher but that would make sense because there's three cats in my bedroom and you know when you have people or animals in a room the humidity is going to go up from respiration hopefully by the end of the day we can get this humidity down below 50 that is the goal so the dehumidifier downstairs is a 30 pint dehumidifier so it's only a little bit smaller than this one a little bit less powerful than this one and it's pretty much the same model, just an updated version. I believe they're both GE. This is GE. This is like Home Depot's midsize. 
There was a smaller one that was like 22 pints and there was a larger one that was like 50 pints. So I went with this one because I figure it's similar in size to the one downstairs. The one downstairs has been working all these years so I'm just going to go with it. And this was less than $200. Um, I got it for like 184 And here's Stella. She's like, what's going on? I also bought more lint rollers. I was in Target. And they also had their Halloween storage bins, like the big storage bins, on sale for only $9. So I bought two purple ones, because purple is the color for Lucky Ferals. So I'm going to use them in my storage room downstairs. As things come out of the laundry, I'm going to put them in the large purple bins. That way I will know it's the cat stuff without even having to open them and look at them. It's 6 p.m. here, Stella. The humidity sensor in this room says it's at 42%. Let's check the other humidity sensors. Here in the kitchen, it says 48%. My bedroom says 45%. Hey boo. Here's the dehumidifier, it says 50. Outside it looks like it has been raining. Everything is wet. Here are the two sensors I have downstairs. They're right next to each other. The older one says 41%, the newer one says 44%, so that's great. Here's the dehumidifier downstairs, and it's at 45%. Super happy about that. So here's Sammy, and I just saw a few fleas on my socks. I'm wearing white socks and white pants, so I could see every little speck. So the fleas are not dead yet because Right now would be about 24 hours of below 50% humidity down here. So we still need to do this for at least another day, but I have heard that, you know, some people say it takes like a week or so. So I'm just gonna keep the humidity as low as possible for as long as possible and let's see if we notice a difference. It's 6.39 p.m. and I just noticed that we are down to 45% humidity on this dehumidifier. Really excited about that. It's 8.35 p.m. I just came downstairs to start the evening routine down here. And these three have been laying together on this daybed. They're still scratching so there's still fleas. I'm really disappointed because I checked the weather forecast and we're not supposed to see sunshine until three days from today. It's supposed to be rainy for the next two days, so I'm really not happy about that. We need like an entire week of sunny, dry weather. Right, Sammy? So the cats just got up because I'm starting to clean and I'm running over the furniture and the sheets with this roller and I've been picking up some fleas with it. If I see any of the fleas moving on it, I just press them down harder and then they get stuck. But there were some live fleas on here. It is 11 a.m. and here's Boo. So Boo got flea combed this morning and Simba got flea combed and Stella got flea combed and Simba tried to attack me. That was not very nice of Simba. Um, I vacuumed everything up here today. I used the lint roller on uh, this bed area. Every time Boo itches or scratches himself, then I take a flea comb to that area and I never find a flea. So out of all the cats, Boo has the least amount of fleas. And I really think it's because he's been spending most of his time here on this blanket. And I think it's because he knows. He's like, I'm not going to go running around the house and getting myself full of fleas when I'm happy here and I'm not itching. So uh, I think Boo's been smart with regards to that. I mean, he does, like, if we're eating or something, he'll, he'll move around the house. When I was vacuuming, he was running around. But for the most part, he's just been hanging out. We also have to remember with Boo, he is having an allergic reaction to the flea bites. So a lot of times when he's, like, grooming or itching, it is because of the allergic reaction. So I'm hoping that over time that will definitely lessen. Um, those advantage to um, drops that go on the back of their necks did absolutely nothing. I mean, maybe they killed some larvae or eggs, but there's no way to tell. But as far as fleas, I'm brushing fleas off of these cats like every day. I'm feeling like a scab here behind Boo's ear. This is the dehumidifier. Right now it's at 45, but it was down to 40. And then it kicked off this morning. 
and then I emptied the tank and it's back up to 45. Now I made a mistake this morning and that was I was cooking some oatmeal on the stove and I didn't have like a cover on the pan so all the steam was escaping and it wasn't like the instant oatmeal it was like the kind that you have to like cook for 10 minutes so I have to remember not to do that. I don't want to do anything that is going to release water vapor into the air. Here in the bedroom, it's 43% humidity, according to this meter. This morning, it was down to 39. Um, so we're going to keep the dehumidifier running and see if we could get this to go back down. Here's Simba. He's laying on their food tray in the kitchen. He was very, very ornery this morning. It was not fun. I've never seen him try to attack me the way he did when I was trying to flea comb him today, probably because he was hungry. So they're gonna get their food and then I'm gonna flea comb him a little bit later if I can. Good morning, Ringo. How are you today? Those are plates from dinner last night. I piled them up, I'm gonna remove them. Hey, Sammy. Hey, Eva. There's Goldie, she's itching, and there's Nancy. So today I'm changing things up a bit. So for the past few days, I've been vacuuming first and then flea combing the cats after. And I think that's been agitating the cats. So what I'm gonna do today is first use the lint roller on the furniture, and then I'm gonna flea comb the cats and see if it goes better, and then I'll vacuum. I also should mention that today is a very exciting and hopeful day because it will have been 48 hours since I've had the dehumidifier on. So it'll be 48 hours since it's been below 50% humidity down here. So hopefully that will mean we'll start seeing some fleas die off. I heard that you need a minimum of two days of dehumidifiers running to start seeing flea die off. So let's see if that's true. Hey Richard. I just grabbed all of my flea combing supplies and look at Richard. He's like, I'm ready. I'm ready for you to comb me. <laughs> He's so funny. It is 1.15 p.m. and here's Stella. She's sleeping in this cat tower. The noise in the background is the dehumidifier and it is pouring rain. I just had to go outside to do something and it is really coming down. And it's been this way all morning, which is really not good considering I'm trying to reduce the humidity levels in the house. It is 10.48 p.m. Here's Ziggy. Here's Richard. I just scooped their litter and I am just about to give them their second flea combing of the day. It has now been more than 48 hours since the dehumidifiers have been on. It's quite warm in the house because of the dehumidifiers so I guess they um, pull in moisture and then expel warmer air. Right now the two temperature sensors down here say it's around 76.6 degrees. One says it's 39% humidity, the other says 42% humidity. So that's really good. I am very, very hopeful that the lack of humidity will start killing fleas. When I flea comb the cats this morning, I really did not notice much of a difference, if at all, with regards to the quantity of fleas that I was getting out of the cats. So I'm hoping maybe now, when I flea comb them now, I will notice a difference. But we'll see. I'm just trying to remain hopeful. The flea traps continue to have few fleas on them. There's maybe two or three more fleas from this morning, but that's not much at all. It's 11.30 p.m. Here's Goldie. So I flea combed for the cats and I vacuumed and I put new sheets on the furniture and I put the old sheets in the wash. I also scooped out all the litter and as far as flea combing goes, Richard was good. He only had a few fleas on him. Ziggy had the least amount of fleas out of the four that I flea combed. Sammy had some and Nancy had the most. Nancy had a lot of fleas but I still think it's because so many cats just rub up on her all day and sleep with her. So earlier today I came down here and there were four of the girls on Boo's old day bed and Nancy was right in the middle and it was little Eva and Ziggy and Goldie and 
I remember looking at them going, oh yeah, that's going to be a lot of fleas. And then later this afternoon, I came downstairs and it was little Eva, Ziggy, and Nancy. And I moved toward the day sofa so I could see if there was any like fleas dropping off of them. And when they jumped off, there were live fleas underneath little Eva where she was laying. So here's little Eva right now. She's on the floor next to the trampoline. Here's Richard. What I'm hoping is that the fleas in the environment start drying out and dying, meaning like any fleas that are in the rug or on furniture or on cat towers, maybe they'll be the first ones to die. And then anything that's on the cats might be more resistant because obviously the cats have moisture on their skin. So there's gonna be higher humidity in a cat's fur than in the environment so that is what my hope is we'll see i don't want to lose hope and i really want these dehumidifiers to start working as far as killing off fleas but i definitely combed a lot of fleas off the four that i was able to comb today
It is 10.30 a.m. and here's Stella. She just ate her breakfast. So the cats had breakfast this morning and before that they had some playtime and before that they were flea combed. And I did find a few fleas on Stella but not as much as I found on her last night. So last night right before I went to bed she finally let me give her a really really good flea combing. I found a bunch of fleas on her. So I'm very thankful that this morning there were not as many fleas on her. Here's the dehumidifier. It currently says 40% humidity on it and this actually shut off overnight and I thought it shut off because it got the humidity low enough to where it kicks off because when it hits 35% humidity, that's the setting I have on it. It's supposed to, you know, then kick off and then only come back on when it starts rising again. But I was wrong and the reason why I kicked off was because it needed to be emptied. So when I woke up this morning, this humidity sensor, which is now at 41%, was at like 47, 48%. And I was like, oh no, I better put that dehumidifier back on before the humidity gets too high again. It is another wet and rainy day. So it's been raining most of the morning, it's supposed to rain the rest of the day. And it's 95% humidity outside. So the dehumidifiers that I have inside are really doing a good job to get the humidity out of the air. Tomorrow is supposed to be sunny and then we're supposed to have a few days of sunny weather. So I'm hoping that that really helps with drying out the air and maybe the humidity levels inside can go even lower. Good morning, Richard. Good morning, Sammy. Good morning, Goldie and Nancy. So it says the humidity downstairs is 38% and 41%. Morning, Ringo. And the dehumidifier is 45%. And here's the flea trap. There's definitely more fleas on it than yesterday. And here's the other flea trap. There's also a few more fleas on it than yesterday. Not too many more. Hello, Sammy. So last night when I came downstairs, the first thing I did was brush the cats and it worked out really, really well because they weren't freaked out by the vacuum or anything. So I'm going to do the same thing today. First thing I'm going to do is brush the cats and then after I brush them, then I will do the vacuuming and that worked out better. Then after the vacuuming is when I gave them their meal. Here's Richard and I just flea combed Richard and we have like a routine now and he is the the best cat in the house for flea combing probably even better than boo although boo enjoys it more but richard just lays here on the sofa and he lets me flea comb him no problem and i give him a few treats flea comb him for a little while give him a few more treats flea comb him for a little while if i need to get his other side i just put some treats here and then he turns around he is such a good cat to flea comb. Richard, you are such a good boy when it comes to letting me flea comb you. So I just combed him really, really well. I got some fleas off of him, but it was less fleas than yesterday. So I don't know. I'm hoping we're moving in a positive direction here. Good job, Richard. Such a good boy. Are you next, Sammy? You're next? Are you next? It's 4.30 p.m. right now, and I just got another package of these Therm Pro indoor humidity and temperature monitors. I ordered these on Amazon, and I already have three of these in the house, but I wanted to get three more um, so I can know exactly what's going on in every room. So all you do is slide out the battery compartment, and it comes with batteries and they're wrapped in plastic. So I just have to get them out of the plastic. So what I've noticed as I've been moving these around my house is that there are actually like little microclimates that go on 
in the house um, in different rooms. So it just slides in and then up here there's a button for Fahrenheit and there's plastic on the front. Just need to take that off. Um, so these will get themselves acclimated to what's going on in the house. So for example, if I put one of these in the bathroom, the moisture level, the humidity is always much higher in the bathroom, which is good because that makes me know it needs to be better ventilated, especially after a shower. And then I also wanted to put one in Boo's room because I feel like that room is a different temperature and if it's a different temperature, the humidity level might be different. So I wanna see what's going on in there. And then that leaves me another one that I could move around the house to wherever I want to do like a spot check. So for example, right now I have one of these near the back door and I'm doing a spot check near the back door. And what I realized was that yesterday when it was raining and I had the back door open, but the storm door was shut, that the area near that area, like the area right inside the back storm door, even though um, there's glass in that door, it's not like a screen door, the humidity was over 50%. So, um, you know, this is war, this is a battle, and I wanna make sure the entire house, every inch of it is below 50% humidity. So I'd rather have more than enough of these, um, and that way I'll know like everywhere there's an issue, I'll be able to put these sensors. So this sensor should start acclimating to the house now also. Yeah, so I'm really happy that I got three more of these and I'll see how they do. I have a new experiment going on in Boo's room right now. So I just walked in here to get something and I noticed a few fleas jumped on my white socks. So I was reading a book today that says fleas are attracted to the color green, like a green light. And they're also attracted to a green light that is kind of blinking. And then I remembered that I have these LED candles and you could set the color and they kind of flicker. So I just put it on green and I put this plate with water on the bottom. There's already a flea in it. And I'm standing here and I have one flea on each sock. So I'm wondering if this green is too much of a blue green because they said like green and yellow green. But basically I have it in this room. I have the door shut and just because I don't want any cats to drink out of this water, there is some dish detergent in it. So I don't know, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I'm actually going to run two experiments only a few feet away from each other. So I have the green flickering light, which is not giving off any heat. And then I have a tea light candle, which is giving off heat and light. They are both on the same plate uh, with the same water and the same dish soap. The book I was reading today also mentions the tea light method. So I'm just gonna be curious to see if either of these collect fleas, because when I walk in here, I do get a flea or two on my socks. So I know there's fleas in here, so let's see what's happening. It's almost 11 p.m. and the tea light is burning down. I don't know if it's gonna put itself out soon or what, but I counted the fleas and there are four fleas around the tea light and there are eight fleas around the green LED candle. So to me, it looks like the green LED candle is definitely attracting more fleas than the tea light. And the plates are right next to each other because I decided to just move them next to each other to kind of get a better comparison. I thought maybe if they were too far away, that could skew the comparison. So yeah, that's what I did. And what I might do is remove the tea light and put another green LED candle on the other plate before I go to bed. Something else I did tonight was throw out the rug that was in this room. So I do have some extra rugs that I purchased at the Christmas tree shop before they went out of business. And I haven't put them in the room yet. I wanted to, but for some reason I decided to hold off. And I'm glad I did because I just threw out the rug and I'm not gonna put a new one down until the fleas are more under control. It's 11.05 and I just set up a new trap for the room. So I have like an aluminum 
pie pan or like an aluminum cake pan and I put water and dish soap and then I turn this plastic bowl over and I put the candle inside of it so the candles not like above the water it's kind of like inside the water um, and this is battery operated so it's not like a real candle where you could just stick a real candle in water um, there's batteries in the bottom so that needs to stay dry um, so I just put it here and I vacuum this room so we'll see what happens if there will be any fleas in it tomorrow I am going to cover it with this laundry basket just to keep the cats out of it and yeah we'll see it's 11.37 p.m. and here's Boo. He just jumped on the bed. He was in his room for a little while, right Boo? Because I just vacuumed the house and I'm getting ready for bed. So I just wanted to mention my observations from tonight. So Boo, Stella, and Simba were flea combed and there was not really a lot of fleas on them. Boo only had like one or two. And the same thing, Simba and Stella had less than they have been having so I want to take that as a good sign however um, what was increasing was the amount of fleas that I was finding on my white socks so when I was flea combing Stella I would look down and I would look at my white socks and I would see like one two three fleas on my white socks and I would clean them off with the lint roller and squish them up and I would go back to flea combing Stella and the same thing would happen and I was like, what is going on? It was really weird. And like when I walked into Boo's room, one of the reasons why I got rid of the rug is because I'd walk in there without any fleas on my socks and then I'd stand there and then I'd get fleas on my socks. So I was like, you know, this is not good. So let's get rid of the rug. And when I went downstairs to flea comb everyone down there tonight, the same thing happened. Like I had more fleas on my white socks tonight downstairs than I ever have before and I did not get an excessive amount of fleas off of the cats I want to say I probably got the same amount that I got off of them last night if not like a little bit less so yeah I don't know what's going on with that the only thing that I can think of is the fact that I did not vacuum earlier today so normally I've been vacuuming twice a day I've been vacuuming in the morning and I've also been vacuuming at night but today I didn't vacuum in the morning so I'm wondering if that really makes that much of a difference I've read that you know vacuuming really takes care of more than 50% of like the fleas actually upwards of almost 90% of live fleas so I think it's really really important to keep vacuuming twice a day I just wanted to take like a little break from it but I think I definitely noticed a difference here's Simba and I checked the weather forecast for tomorrow and it is supposed to be sunny and 79 degrees tomorrow and the humidity is supposed to get down to around 55 outside so that means with the dehumidifiers running hopefully inside the house it will get a lot lower and I've been keeping the windows closed well the past few days it's been like rainy and damp so it's been fine with the windows closed but if it's sunny and warm tomorrow I know the cats are gonna want me to open the windows and I would normally like to open the windows but because of this flea experiment with the dehumidifiers I'm probably not going to open the windows. I'm just going to let the dehumidifiers run and see how low we can get the humidity in this house. The lowest the dehumidifiers go is like 35, but I don't know if there's like a continuous setting on them where it could go below that. I don't know. We're just going to have to see, but I'm just really happy we're going to see some sunshine and it will be less humid out.